Hidden gluten and cross-contamination. This is a topic that uh, a lot of people kind of are in the dark about or get confused about or just when they're trying to figure out what to eat, where to go, and how to eat, it's just very difficult. You go somewhere, they have a gluten-free menu, you get quote-unquote glutened, and then you kind of wonder and, 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 and surmise as to why. And you can't think of anything potentially that you ate that was a potential insider of why you felt bad, but that's why we're here today. We're going to go into kind of some of the depth and detail of, of uh, what happens and what to look for. So again, today's topic is hidden gluten and cross-contamination. Now, let's talk about what cross-contamination is. Cross-contamination is when gluten comes into contact with gluten-free foods, thus contaminating it. Uh, in this picture, you can see an example of oil, and we've got some chicken nuggets in that oil, and those chicken nuggets are breaded. Now. If you're at a fast food restaurant like Chick-fil-A or McDonald's or Burger King, which first of all, I don't recommend those places anyway, it's Franken food. Um, but if you're there and you think you're going to be able to eat gluten-free, think again. It's not going to happen because even if they say that the oil is gluten-free and that they take care to separate the chicken nuggets from the french fries, you've got 15 and 16 year old working back behind the counter. So. Common sense says they're going to goof up, make mistakes. So you have to ask yourself, is that mistake that they're going to make worth you feeling bad for the next day or two? So my advice is avoid fast food for that reason. But again, this is an example, a prime example of kitchen cross-contamination. If they cook french fries in the same oil, you're going to get glutenized. Cross-contamination is not quite the same thing as hidden gluten. And I just want to make a, just a minor delineation here. Hidden gluten can typically be found on the label. It's when a product doesn't necessarily say it's gluten-free, uh, but at the same time you look at it and you think, that doesn't appear to have any grains in it. And it's all those little hidden terms that manufacturers can use uh, or all those chemicals that they use that are derived from grain-based products. And that's what we're referring to with hidden gluten. So again, we tend to think of bread, cereal, and pasta as foods containing gluten. Hidden gluten is found in items we don't typically consider to be grain products. So hidden gluten on the label. This is just one example of what I mean. And you can see in this particular diagram or in this particular picture, you look there, natural flavor is circular. Okay, what does that mean, natural flavor? That means it could be derived from anything natural, right? Well, plutonium is natural, but we don't want to eat it. Um, natural flavors, and I'm going to have a list of terms here in a short while where you're going to see a lot of the terminology that they use. Any of you who have ever come to see me, I've, I've given you a, a, a kind of a short list of those terms, but there's a lot of terms. MSG is a term that can be de, um, hidden gluten, hydrolyzed vegetable protein, um, there are a number of them, so I'll make sure that you guys get a hold of that list today. So cross-contamination versus hidden gluten. Cross-contamination occurs during food prep. And how many of you are gluten-free? Okay, how many of you are not gluten-free should be up maybe the better question. Okay. So those of you that, that, that eat gluten-free and you live in a household maybe where not everyone is gluten-free, this can be a major, major issue because, again, if you're trying to prepare your food in a gluten fashion and somebody else is coming behind you and maybe using the same soup spoon, right, and they thicken their soup with wheat and then now we get that cross-contamination in the kitchen or if you use a toaster uh, and now you've got breadcrumbs that, uh, that are potentially a toaster oven that are going to contaminate whatever it is, whatever else it is that you're putting in that toaster oven. Additionally, sharing of countertop surfaces Remember, gluten can be detrimental at 20 parts per million. You can't visualize 20 parts per million with the naked eye. So countertop surfaces are oftentimes uh, contamination areas. Sharing of utensils, spoons, can openers, etc. Some people, you know, they use the can opener, open up the Campbell's chicken noodle soup, right? And then they don't wash it off and put it back in the drawer. You come back behind them later on and open up a can of whatever it is and that's a potential for cross-contamination. Sharing of cookware, pans, pots, they can be porous. 
And if they're porous and you use them and they're not cleaned well, you can get cross-contamination exposure. This is notorious for happening, by the way, in restaurants, even when they say they have a gluten-free menu, right? Because they reuse those pots and pans, they reuse those surfaces. Some restaurants, they're throwing flour up in the air to make things fresh. And so you've got particulate matter falling down on your food. Breadcrumbs and salad. This has happened to me. When I, when I first went gluten-free, this has been a number of years, Outback you know, claimed to have this great gluten-free menu, so I, I tried it out. And I got to the bottom of my salad, and there was just a conglomeration of breadcrumbs laying in the bottom of the salad. What they did was they took the breadcrumbs out, the, the bread cubes, right, the croutons, they took those out. And that's all they did to prepare the salad. So again, they, can, they may say that they're taking things out of the food. They may claim that the menu is gluten-free, but you've got human error, and human error oftentimes is, um, is where we run into the problem. And then, of course, flour for breading. If they're breading chicken, chicken fried steak, etc., and again, that flour, if it's tossed around, it can basically it can float into the air, and it, wherever it falls, it lands, right? And if it falls in your plate, well, there you go. So, again, cross-contamination primarily occurs at, at restaurants. You can also get issues with hand washing. If I'm, if I'm the baker uh, or the chef and I'm breading some chicken and then I go and prepare somebody's gluten-free dish and I wash my hands kind of, sort of, and then I wipe off the towel that everybody else uses too, again, that's just another area where we can get cross-contamination. So the... You guys get the trend here. Eating out is not really the best move. It's not really the best thing that you can do. Now, some restaurants say that they take extra care and that they do extra things and they go the extra mile. That's just something you're going to have to judge for yourself. It's not something that I necessarily recommend. Hidden gluten refers to label ingredient terms that are not clear. MSG, maltodextrin, modified food starch. These are all terms uh, that you want to be very, very wary of. By the way, none of those terms are healthy anyway. And so, you know, if we default to the cardinal rule of food, the cardinal rule of health, how many of you know what that is? You can't get healthy, you can't maintain health eating food that isn't healthy. Okay, so it doesn't matter whether it says gluten-free or not. If it isn't healthy, you shouldn't eat it anyway, right? So MSG, is that healthy? Maltodextrin, not healthy. Modified food starch, what kind of food starch? Um, food not considered to contain gluten. This could be soups, dressings, lunch meat. A lot of times they'll inject lunch meat with cereal fillers. It increases the weight and gives them a better price. Salad dressings are oftentimes thickened with grain starches and soups notoriously thickened with grain starches. And it also refers to other items not considered to contain gluten, things that we necessarily don't even eat like stamps, envelopes, those things that we lick, those are gluten-based adhesives. Lotions, uh, wheat germ is a common ingredient. Toothpaste, toothpaste can contain a lot of times flour starches as well. You just have to be careful and read your label. So and most of you don't go around eating toothpaste, but I've had a number of patients brush their teeth with gluten-based toothpaste and break out in mouth or ulcers, mouth sores. I had a patient one time, gums bleeding, gums bleeding, brushed all the time, flossed all the time. Couldn't figure out why the gums were bleeding. Found out there was gluten in the toothpaste. A week after removing that toothpaste from her lifestyle, gums quit bleeding. So again, just examples of hidden gluten. Cross-contamination, you've got old cutting boards. Remember, wood is porous. You've got wooden utensils. Those also are porous. Toaster ovens. See in the picture there, that's a corn dog. And you can see all the crumb and the droppings falling there. Okay, you put your food in that same toaster oven, guess what's going to happen? Um, that's not my toaster oven, by the way. <laughs> the silverware drawer. How many of you ever pulled silverware out of the drawer and you see the little crumbs in the bottom of the drawer? Where do they come from? Where do they come from? <laughs> I think the same people responsible for stealing your one sock. <laughs> crumbs in the, in, the, in the silverware drawer. 